Now, separate thing that we want to talk about as well that, uh, you know, before the show we had discussed um, that you have a lot of knowledge of is sports betting. Right. Um, sports betting in the mafia right. in general, I guess. Um, you guys, right. I know both of you have experiences uh, with that. What, you know, I guess I'll just let you take it away. How involved was the mafia with sports betting? What's the relationship? How did it work? It's It's huge. I mean, from his generation uh, to mine, it's uh, really never changed. Just the way they do it, you know, they had offices where they'd physically have to write it down and do everything. Where to hours, it's on the computers now. Um, but, uh, but basically, it is one of the biggest incomes they have. You know, you're talking about a multi. My the guy I work for I had a multi-million dollar gambling operation where. He, uh, I don't want to get into it, but he even had like celebrities bat with him. <laughs> you know what I mean, like it was that big. So it took any action, you know, some small offices might cap their parlays or cap things. And for f for our operation, he was not uh, uh, capping anything. He was letting you do bet and everything you wanted. Just for, for people that don't understand exactly, you know, maybe the, they've never been involved with sports betting, stuff like that. How does it work between the sport, sporting event, and then the mafia with the bookkeeping and, you know, who's bringing money where, who's taking it. I mean, how is the whole process work? Right. Kind of dumbed down for, like, the people who don't understand right. sports betting. So, nine out of ten times when there's a sports book, it's a mob guy behind it. Um, in, in my operation, uh, he was a captain. He basically, what they do is they get the accounts overseas. So, what they do is they have a guy running for them in the Caribbeans. And they get the accounts. And, the, and you'll pay about $15 each account. And what happens is then you it goes to the accounts or go to the office and then they have guys, their soldiers or their associates, whatever, okay, I got uh, sports betters. Okay, well, I'm going to put you on a half sheet. So now John so-and-so. What's a half sheet? A half sheet is this, basically. So John Eli takes out a, 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 sheet, um, a half sheet with me. He has 20 betters. So the, the, the betters lose 30 grand. 15,000 got to go to the office. 15,000 goes to him. That's mm -hmm. a half sheet, basically. Now there's a red though. There's a thing. There's a red involved now. Let's say his bet is win, forty thousand. He goes in the red for forty thousand, which means he'll make a dollar until they lose back that forty grand. Mm. So that's it, it, you, you can make a lot of money with it, but you could also go. I went in the red one time for eighty thousand, but I had a lot of big action going, so I got out the red in like two weeks. But the benefit of him. With these guys work and they don't lay out no money. Yeah. So say when his guys beat him for eighty thousand, he doesn't lay out a penny. His office does. Right. Uh, I don't pay out to the customers. I just collect the money. But here's the thing: you're responsible for your customers. So if they don't pay the money that's supposed to be collected, you have to make sure that money's paid. So you're kind of like the middleman. You're the middleman. So the office, basically the main guy, if he has to pay out three hundred k, he's paying it out of his pocket. Gotcha. The other guys, the runners, don't have to. We call them runners, whatever you want to call them. Half sheet guys, they don't have to. Well, isn't also, wouldn't it be beneficial in your case to find the worst sports bettors? Well, yeah, but also what comes with the worst sports bettors <laughs> comes <laughs> the, biggest the biggest degenerates. Right. Well, let me tell you something. They don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> They're all bad. Yeah. There is no winners in sports business. You might get a guy that bets with me that has a good season and he wins. If I have 200 guys playing, I used to have about 135 guys. Yeah, so, we had so I'd have two or three to beat me for the season. Beat me, personally. But they probably lost with them because they don't play with one bookmaker. They play with several. And he probably lost money with him. And the same thing with them. You're not in business as a bookmaker if you're going to lose. You don't lose. That's why the casinos are all in business. Uh, overall, guys make hits here and there. But overall, uh, you're, you're winning. You're well, not losing. And I'll give you a perfect scenario because I laugh about it all the time. The parlay. It's the biggest sucker bet in the bet in the world because you'll put these three teams in for like two hundred bucks. You're like, wow, for two hundred, I'll get back fourteen hundred, whatever it is. The chance of you hitting those three teams is like you hitting the pick four lottery in the store. It's like rare. It don't happen. So you know you might get lucky here and there, but at the most time you're gonna lose most of the time. Mm. That's what it is. And so for you, um, you know doing this so you're doing this on a weekly basis i mean every day monday through sunday there's games every day all day and when when do you have to get the money to okay so monday starts your new week sunday night is your last night okay now that's sunday night you don't pay or get paid till the following friday gotcha okay so you still could bet that whole week because you're going to go down again, probably. And then the next Friday, you can owe me from that week. Here's how they run into trouble. So, you yeah. know, a guy plays up to Sunday. 
Sunday night fo- football because that's the biggest right. season everybody bets. And he loses at the end of the night. He loses 2700 right? He, maybe he doesn't have that kind of money, but he loses 2700 So now Monday comes along. Here's the decision-making comes with this business. Do you let him in and bet for the following week on Monday? Now his answer to you is, how are you going to cut me off? I just lost 2700 Your boss's answer is, how are you going to let him in? He can't even make the 2700 Guy only makes 50000 a year. So you got to make that decision because this is where it comes the violence where Gene's talking about. I got to go out and they're deadbeats. Mm. Now they don't they lose Monday because they're trying to catch. You know right. they're always playing catch up. That's how they end up losing more and more. When a guy's catching up, they never catch up for the most part. <laughs> so if he bets on Monday, he loses. And you let him in and he bet another thousand. Now he's in the hole thirty seven. You have to cut him Tuesday. He's gonna beg to come in. When he cuts him, they call like my office. So somebody's office doesn't know know he lost that kind of money. And this is how these guys run into trouble in the gambling business. And, and you want something funny because he's so right. When I was younger, just in the game, I looked up to Ronnie G and Vinny. Ronnie G, I was with him all the time. So he actually messed with my head because uh, when I was learning how to do it and everything, I brought him the money. I said, oh, this guy didn't pay me. He's short, whatever. He looks at me. He goes, you can't collect your money? He goes, go get a fucking nine to five job then. He goes, handle that. So in my brain, I'm like, wow, this guy just... Mm. made me feel like a jerk off. I went down, I smacked the guy in the head with a pipe because that's where he had my head. He got me so mad. So then he actually made me, uh, you know, like, you can't collect your money? What are you, a mm. jerk off like saying? Go get a job. And, and, now, that <laughs> and now I would be, another guy would handle it different. I'd tell him, don't hit him with the pipe. See, don't slap him, don't do anything or you use, you lose the better. You're right. going to lose the gambler because he's going to find a way to pay you, but he's never going to bet with you again if you put your hands on him. So he's going to bet with me now. Mm. And he's going to bet with another office. So the idea is you got to be a little bit of a psychiatrist still. So you got to <laughs> yeah. go to the guy and go, listen, my boss wants me to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. Give me something so I can justify with him that you're paying. And really, that's what you're going to do. You're going to see, if, especially if the guy's been winning the last couple of weeks and you paid him, and then all of a sudden he comes out empty. That's when you really don't want to hurt him. But you got to tell him, what do you got? He'll say 500. All right, give me the 500. Give me 200 a week until you, until you come up with a lump sum. Right. And you can't, play, you can't play anymore. And don't let me find out you're playing somewhere else. <laughs> it's, you know, but you're, you're dealing with it's mostly so, degenerates, yeah. so they're going to play anyway. It, it, it's so true because we're saying it's the same scenario with everybody. But you see, like, I, didn't want, I never wanted to look bad to these people. Mm. So, like, when he embedded in my head, oh, you know. What do you, you can't collect your money? That got stuck in my head. Like, you don't want to look like an idiot, like you can't collect your money. Mm. But like, I've negotiated with people too. I had to go to people's family sometimes, say, listen, I don't want to hurt your son, but if you don't pay me, I'm going to hurt him. So he owes me 15 grand, 20 grand, whatever it is. I don't want to hurt him, but I'm going to hurt him. So I'm basically trying to tell him, you're going to have to pay me. And if you don't pay me, I'm going to hurt him. So they would then pay me. <laughs> I, I want you to understand, you know, say he owes 15 grand, yeah. it's still for the people to listen. He can also say, well, I'll bring you to Johnny or Mike or Tommy or Ronnie or whoever, and we'll give you a loan at three points. In other words, you're going to start paying juice. So they're going right. to pay the 15000 right up front. Right. And now you're paying juice money forever until you can pay back uh, the loan shark. Now here's where it steps into yeah. another business. Nightmare. It's so and it becomes, or you can say to him, listen, say you know the guy, you like the guy. You owe me fifteen. I'm going to get you to 12000 and we're gonna squash the 15. He's gonna give his guy his end of 15,000, The other 7,500 is really his. So he's gonna say, yeah, screw it. I'll take 4,500 in my pocket now. I'll give him a break and I'll get him the juice money. Or he'll give him the money himself and says he got it from somebody else, charge him juice. I mean, there's a million angles you're gonna play now. But it gets stressful, especially like say you have 150 people working or that are betting with you, and you have a you have an issue every you know on, with 100 of them. Well, that's where the well, that's where. I mean, it's what are you good, driving well, right, left, and center? To it's find also people good and, to be known to be violent because guys don't want to short you. You know, like I said, I had a guy on my crew, Pudgy, where no one paid the guy. They used to jerk, jerk him around because no repercussions. With me, they didn't really want to short me because they know I was gonna you know do something so bad. So then, why me. wouldn't they just work with Pudgy the whole time? Well, I mean, they switch over because they beat him on the money. So now they can't use them no more. So they got to go to someone else. So they're actually, sometimes they're forced to deal with the 
the violent guys because they already got over on the weak guys mm. so much so that they gotta, won't deal with them no more. You got to be a psychiatrist. You got to be a parent. You got to be a yeah. mathematician. Oh, it's it's a nightmare. Because when you're gambling, if I know you make a quarter of a million a year, your limit weekly is a little different. If this guy makes a hundred thousand, his week is different. If this guy's fifty, his is different. If you're known to be a de degenerate gambler, your limit's a little different. And he's got to stay on top of all his players. And you got to try wait, to and be then, smart the way then you handle. You, wait, but then you build relationships with the people and you start to like them. That's what hurt me. The guys that are betting with me now, I'm actually liking them now. We became friends. They're losing their, they're, they're losing every week big money, and I'm like, damn. I, I start to now, now I'm starting to as I get old. I'm like, all right, I made fifteen thousand. I made seventy five hundred. How much did you lose? I lost fifteen hundred, Gene. All right, I'll knock off five hundred of my and just get me a thousand. That's what I started doing later on because I'm like, you start feeling bad almost now. Is it always cash? Selling their wife's jewelry. I had somebody selling his wife's jewelry. He was so scared of me. He was selling his wife's Rolex and. Necklace. This guy, there's guys that give up their cars. Yeah. I, got a, I got a friend who's in Switzerland, and he runs a sports office, a casino. He actually took a hotel off of somebody that owed him I that see. kind of money. Wow. I had a friend who just passed away. He owned three nursing homes. And with the casino, he got a line home. of credit. No, there's a line. Well, the casino's bigger yeah. gangster still. Yeah. So they, he's got a line of credit, and actually he lost his nursing home. So, mm -hmm. you know, this happens to a lot of people. So, wow. you know, gambling business is, uh, you know, there's a lot of degenerates. I mean, obviously there's so, much, so many casinos around. That tells you how many people gamble. And how many um, of the people that are working, are they, you know, that are playing with you, are, are they mafia-related or just normal people? Oh, no, well... It depends, you know. Like I said, the guys that are the running the half is. sheets, they're runners, they're associates. A lot of times, or they, or are you guys gambling soldiers. too at the same time? We have, yeah. I have, of course, everyone yeah. does that. You know, who, if but, you but say, who, you don't who's, do that, who's, your, who's your, who's your, who's then your book? Listen, me and Ronnie G used to bet on his cousin Jackie's office, and no one even knew about it. We would secretly be put. What do you mean by bet on their office? Because what does that mean? For before that Ronnie understand. had his office, it was his cousin Jackie's office, so okay. we would be secret accounts on his, on his. so we'd have we, we pull some we, we'd be betting on his accounts on the side and then it's all it's just the bro it's it, it, you know this this could get very complicated but let yeah. me explain something yeah. to you you eat pizza at one place right. yeah there's 10 pizza rings in this area right okay right. so you got 10 pizza places our guys are betting with us and our line is say the giants two points right so maybe the guy down the block, Gino's Pizza, his line is four points for some reason. So we're going to hedge all our bets over to him because we're getting four points. We catch a middle. We beat our players and we beat him because of a two-point right, spread. Right, right. I mean, it gets very complicated. We could go all over the place yeah, with yeah. this to really make you understand it. But all of us that are in the street, the mob, whatever you want to say. We all work together at different offices. We push stuff off, we do it, you know, because there's there's games and there's different lines and then you jump in betters. Maybe somebody bet a half a million with me on one game. I don't want to keep it all, so I'll hedge 100,000 over to another office. Uh -huh. Just in case we lose, I don't get clobbered on one game because you want the board to, to be even. In other words, 200,000 on the Giants, 300,000 on the Jets, 400,000 on Dallas Cowboys, but one game is 800,000 on uh, uh, the Broncos. You don't want that one game to determine your, right. your day's money or right. your week's money. So you get rid of 400,000, you right. keep it balanced with the And rest I guess, of yeah, for people, it, it, uh, it's a spread it out so that you're well, you never too high. You gotta be a mathematician because yeah. if you spread it out properly, you'll never lose. Right. And also, you never want the guy that does the straight bets. You always want the guy that bets the whole board. Oh, I want this team, these team, parlays, reverses. You never want that guy that says, all right, I want $1,000 on that team. And when you watch that guy, he knows what he's doing. Because when a guy takes mm -hmm. one game a day and he tries to hit you, I've seen it done. They'll win three, four, five thousand a week on you, and they play one game. They'll study for the day. They'll pick one game. You get well, yeah. the maniacs that put in five team parlays. This, this, that. Yeah. They never win. They never win. You got alightsports.com, right? My company. Okay. You got guys that sit in my office all day with computers, right? And they are guys that know the business and know give you a little edge of who to bet. Mm. And people call us and they ask for the game. So like he's saying, they're sharp guys, they're called handicappers, yeah. Yeah. right? And they'll follow college basketball, they're experts at it. They'll pick one or two games, they'll check to see if your line is weak. In other words, it's supposed to be three points and you got it at one and a half, they'll clob you. But the guy that bets 10 and 15 games a day, bets the whole board, you know what the odds are to hit all 15 of those games or 10 games? It's, it's, it's very awesome. difficult. So the more games they bet, and when they bet a two-team reverse, 
you know, it, they need both games. If they had a three-team parlay, they need all three. It's very hard. You know, they start, the odds are going down and down and down. That's right. why the payment goes up on those. You get more money on those. But overall, <laughs> if you're very sharp on how you run your office, a professional yeah. office, no one's going to beat you, especially for the season. Right. Maybe for a week you get hit a little bit. But overall, you're going to win if you know how to run the office properly. Yeah. You should, and, and, you know, you're, you're like, <laughs> it was funny. We had a guy betting women's college something where we're like, this guy knows what he's doing. Out of all the games, he's picking this no-name college, like you never even heard of this school, and betting these games and winning. We're like, get rid of this guy. He's going to hit us. And then we chase him off the account. Professional gambler, get out of here. Go do it to somebody else. And what what was the biggest like singular bet you guys got each? I guess while working book bookkeeping. Well, it was never my office, but I mean, the Ronnie G's office that we were working for, uh, he he had no limit. So if you want whatever you wanted to put in, what's the you. biggest thing you you heard personally? Oh, two hundred k, one hundred fifty k. I've seen bets like that. Sure. We have, uh, I had the New York Mets bet. We had a lot of big gambles. I had Gotti Senior, uh, his, some of his friends betting with me, uh, guy Ali Lizard. These were big gambles. And you try to limit, because you know who guys, sharp guys are. You try to limit, depending on the size of your office. Willie Boy Johnson was Gotti Senior's partner in the business. And that's who I used to call in to call a half sheet into him. And I had my own office. But I wouldn't handle that kind of action. So if they're betting, it, it, I would call him. I'd say, how much you want to take from him? And Willie would say, oh, okay, take five dimes a game. That's 5,000 a game. But he'd bet the board. Sometimes he'd say, okay, you could take 20 dimes for that day, for whatever reason. So it depends on, you know, who you're dealing with uh, and what office and, you know, how big my office is. But, you know, you try to limit guys. You don't let them bet 100 dimes on a game. So if guys saying, oh, I want the Giants 100,000, you know, you, you just don't do it. Right. You try to lower those those bets. And But I had some big gambles, like I said, that, yeah. Would bet the board about six games, and sometimes they get hot. A guy like Ali was a sharp better. Remember, so it's you different. know he'd hit me for a hundred, hundred fifty thousand for a weekend or a night. Right. You know, so no, because his error is different because they took calls. Yeah, it's not phone calls. How anymore. did that work? So you take right. a call, you have to you write have it offices. down. Or, you have guys how, that work in the office. I have three phone guys in here like us. Right. Phones would ring, three different lines. You'd write it down. You call in a bet. We had a main office. We'd call in for the lines because the lines would change depending yeah, on where all the numbers went. That's why I said it. you got to really know what you're doing. So we ran a, a good operation. We had now Vegas it's easy lines. With the internet and everything. Well, you got the internet, but still, you got to have sharp lines because yeah. if you're not sharp and you got a sharp guy, there's a good handicapper. I had two guys out of Atlantic City. This guy Frank and his two sisters were in wheelchairs, and all they did was handicap all day. And they worked with me, and they were phenomenal. Actually, two girls that were really phenomenal. And Frank was a big, you know, big better too. So, you know, it, it just depends. It's like anything else. Right. You improve your office as you go. And we had several locations. So we'd run the phones here and it would call forward to another location. So if the cops came to knock our door in, they'd come in. We also had burners. So we take our paperwork, just throw it, and it automatically goes on fire. So we have different tactics at the same time. Uh, the recordings, our tapes would go on. You know, we could put them on fire so they couldn't get them. But, you know, the, over the years, things change. Right. Like they go overseas now. Because if I told you, oh, I want a 10-time reverse, you look at me like, uh, you have no clue what I'm telling you. Yeah. You have to even know, if I wrote down baseball bets like they used to write it, you think I'm writing Chinese to you. You don't, you don't even understand it. Because yeah. you have to learn how to write. Base, baseball is very hard when you write it down. So guys that in the office, they got to know what they're doing. I want a 200-time box reverse. You look at me and go, what is that? You don't have a clue. I know that. We know that stuff because yeah, yeah. we're taught that stuff. Uh -huh. You have no idea what that is. I can tell you what single bets part of these <laughs> yeah, right, right. and yeah, Ron different. Robbins. Rever I can tell you that. but Reverse, that reverse is gone. You probably know what a reverse is. I don't know is. what a reverse right, is. Reverse was yeah. a big thing back then. They it's didn't have money. that no more. What, what was a reverse? It, it's, it, it's, it's a lot different. It's like a poly, but here's the thing. If you, win, if you lose one side... I, got, I can't even explain it to you. We need more time I to explain it. So, another time, all right? <laughs> it's bigger money, though. It's bigger money. And so, other question for you. I think this stuff is fascinating. But um, So, you said you had, you had New York Mets players playing with you. Now, does that make you... Are they allowed to... Do you allow them to bet on their own games? The New York Mets, actually, they only bet on their own games. They didn't bet against themselves ever. So, then why would you take and, their money if they know they can affect the outcome? Like, if you... If they're... They, they never affected the outcome. They actually, the, the one thing I said about the Mets when they were gambling with us, and I said it back then, and it was a Keith Hernandez check that came out in the newspapers, you know, when all the shit hit the fan, and, you know, and uh, I said the guys actually uh, took their own side, never tried to bet against themselves. Okay. 
So they couldn't affect the outcome. Right. They didn't even try if to they affect take the outcome. They took their own side. They P took their own P side. P they P never Rose, bet against themselves. Pete right. Rose didn't either, right? He got screwed, though. Pete Rose never yeah. bet against himself. I mean, they himself. bet other teams right. besides right. themselves, but they never, ever put a bet in gotcha. uh, against themselves. And when, when you they were 86 see, months, I mean, they won a yeah. World Series. <laughs> so I guess they did all right. When and they you, used to hang out with us at Spratt's Channel 80. So, you know, we were all young then. We were all hanging out together. When you were, when they would say, you know, say a Mets player is like, yeah, I'm going to take my side today. I'm con I know I'm, I, I know what I'm doing. I got this. Did that then maybe, you know, for you personally influence you and make you want to bet on them or, you know, having that kind of insider information? My dad was a huge gambler. So he bet on anything. So I wasn't a huge gambler. Okay. I'd play a little bit here and there. But I loved taking the action. That was my gambling. You know, why would I gamble and when then, I knew I needed this game, this game, that game? So that then was you start my... rooting for things. <clears throat> well, because I didn't have to watch the game. <laughs> right. Some guys, like my father, would watch the games. I watch the games, enjoy them. But I already knew at the end of the week, I could guarantee you, if we played Russian roulette and had to put a bullet in your head, that that bullet wasn't going to go off in my head. That we're going to win because gamblers don't lose. I mean, gamblers lose. Bookmakers don't lose. 